This is the NBA Storyteller. Hi, my name is... And this is the NBA Storyteller. What you're going to enjoy tonight is a classic episode of the NBA Storyteller's journey. Now wait, wait, hear me out, hear me out. We do this for two distinct reasons. One, we seem to be getting a surge of viewers and I wanna make sure all the folks know that all of our episodes on this channel are evergreen. We don't cover daily topics here, we cover timeless topics. Even those recap finals videos that you may or may not have avoided clicking on. Those are just as enjoyable now. Anyway, the second reason is that this is part one of a very important series. And we're finally going to start dropping part twos to a lot of our thoughts. Also, if you've already seen this episode, then maybe share it with a friend. Or hit play and let your fish watch. We're big in the fish demo. Regardless, anyone getting this far, I appreciate it. And please hang on and enjoy the episode. But wait, the common theme. Occasionally we do common themes here. And the common theme for today is dunked on. Any comment you see about any topic down here, dunk on it. Just dunk on him. Dunk on an innocent bystander. Dunk on yourself. Dunk on this whole video. Tell someone you just dunked on their dad. And that's why you couldn't make it to your Little League game. Maybe you accidentally dunked on someone's service dog. I don't know. Maybe tell us about a time you wish you could have dunked on someone. Like at the airport ticket counter. Listen, I don't know how this is going to work, really. I don't know how it works to dunk on people's comments. But I just want to see havoc and creativity, the likes of which the world has never seen. Please enjoy this classic episode, and I'll see you tonight. I'll tell you some stories. Civilization. Progress. Mankind. And our march out of the sea. Was all leading to an undeniable destination. The slam dunk. There is no single action on earth that is greeted with such pure, soulful joy and lightning shocked satisfaction. And there has yet to be discovered another instantaneously creates the ecstasy and disgust in the same nanosecond. It's glorious, like heaven descending on earth. If only for a moment. An ode to the dark. Let's go back. In 2012, during a brief layover in Chicago's Midway Airport, I, me, Emio, I saw in the haze of distance and sun a man with an unmistakable profile. This fellow traveler was someone quite familiar with Chicago, and more than likely wasn't just passing through. He had no security, he had no entourage. This was my chance. I felt like I had scripted this moment. As I pretended to walk naturally, Noticing every synapse firing, minding each foot in front of the other foot. Must bend knees, swing your arms, do not stop swinging. I barreled through space, I gained speed. I was there. I had nothing. I had failed. So I quickly pivoted into a hard left turn and continued on to my gate. And off to some stupid place. For some context, this was a particularly shameful breakdown because I had planned for this day for the past 20 years. Between 1996 and when YouTube became a thing, I would anticipate seeing the best dunks on NBA Inside Stuff or any of the many basketball videos I purchased with a little bit of money my parents gave me for good grades. But many of the dunks were lost to the era. You couldn't play out a moment 88 times, observing the bench, observing the fans, observing every single reaction until you were sick of it. Finding a specific clip was damn near impossible and usually involved writing a letter to the league. 
But in a post-YouTube world, the obsession is all at our fingertips. But just to put some more context, context matters until it doesn't, I'm getting to be a little bit of an old fart. I saw this one. In your face, Kevin Johnson! As it happened. There was even a point when my favorite player was Kevin Johnson. Kevin freaking Johnson. Kevin Johnson! I even wrote him a letter. And this dunk oh, that's a highlight. was all the validation I needed for him to stay at the number one spot. By the way, the letter did not work out well. He sent it back. My card and the letter were not autographed. And he fell out of my top ten favorites immediately after. Oh, you'll be seeing that on your local newscast. Thompson says he's fed up with the mayor's lack of help for the homeless. I still stand by what I did. Guests were left stunned when Thompson revealed his alleged weapon, a coconut cream pie. Really hit him hard with that pie. But when asked if he'd do it again. Absolutely, I'd do it twice. Dear Kevin, maybe if you just suck it up, sign a kid's letter, and nobody's going to hit you in the face with the pie 20 years later. Maybe not. Sincerely, a former kid. P.S. Do not try and fix this. Now the dunk is as much mental as it is physical, and I want to understand the process. See, what I like to do is I like to try and decipher when exactly they decide. That split second decision when they know they're going straight to the rim. He had one thing on his mind when he got the ball at the three point line. Sometimes you can see it in the defense. It changes for a split second and allows a last minute choice to dunk it. But what is amazing is when you see that instant the dude gets the ball, and his mind is made up. It's like they're looking right through all the defenders. For those last few dribbles, nobody can touch you. For those two steps, you're bounding between clouds. You are a goddamn levitating tank prepared to destroy anything in your path. They know there's going to be a confrontation in the sky. Oh, they know. And whoever is under there better get out of the way. Curry just looking to get out of the way. Yeah. Or rise with all the conviction and resilience to take your punishment. And then you and the rim meet in a moment of hmm. See, I, I don't hmm. I don't think it's aggression towards the rim. I think it's more of a, a celebration. I think it's more of a celebration with the rim. As the orange ring bounces up and down, accentuating your force. It lets you ride if you want to hang on for the tech. Or not. If you're LeBron. Side note. Good lord. Good lord, I hate alternate angles. Alternate angles are only for the slow motion replays. That is it, no exceptions. Don't cut to the under the basket. Do not try to get creative and cut to the overhead angle. That wide ass shot from the side is where you're supposed to stay. Sure, some annoying dude's hand may pop up in the camera shot every once in a while, but that's just what you deal with. Okay? That is where you stay. That is where you stay. So, one of the reasons I think the dunk is so exciting is its pure recklessness. With no regard for human life. To be honest, it seems a tad unnecessary. If you have the ability to dunk, you could also just drop it in. And technically, you are just putting it in. The ball is headed to the rim when you start to grab the rim anyway. There's almost no reason other than avoiding a fall to grab the rim. I mean, we do see this type of dunk quite a bit, you know that dunk where they pull their hands back so quick it's like they just fouled someone if they're trying to get away with it? Or the super ugly dunk that happens at 9 and 3, you know, hands on complete opposite sides of the rim. And we also have seen the rise of this type of dunk, which is literally throwing it in. 
Thankfully, the sound and the force give us a similar satisfaction in real time. But that sudden impact of the hand on rim and rapid deceleration while the rim plays its part is missing when we watch it back in slow motion. And it is never as satisfying. It actually looks kind of stupid, actually. And when you do see it in slow motion, it looks pretty stupid. It looks pretty dumb. Which is proof beyond a doubt that it should not be categorized as a dunk. Because, getting to rule number one, slow motion should only increase the impressiveness of a dunk. That is a rule. Also, the idea of a dunk is that you cannot be stopped. And guess what, Blake? You did. You got stopped. It's like the elevator went to the third floor and paused. Okay, so the recklessness. That, I think, is at its peak in this particular situation, when the ball gains a mind of its own and almost gets away. It's like a series of bad decisions and carelessness that result in the best, most satisfying feeling that can take place for a family audience. Annis, look out below! He was looking for contact from Tremaine O'Neal, got a piece of it. Right here. Now, a dunk is very personal. A man's dunk style is as telling as anything. Maybe as telling as their There's jump shot form. The other splash brother, Clay, uh, who dropped 37 points uh, in a quarter, and whose jump shot is actually a little prettier. <laughs> and whose jump shot is actually a little prettier. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. To be completely honest, the only time one man can use the word pretty in front of another man this shot may be even be a little bit prettier. Hey, it's it's beautiful. Beautiful. when he's referring to his jump shot. That's it. No exception. Pretty is just not one of those words you want to be caught using. And if you do, or you should ask yourself, how did I get to this point? People make fun of jump shot forms all the time. It's very personal. Players have an inherent dunk. Which brings me to rule number two. If you're going to judge a man, judge him by his dunk. Here's some of my favorites. The David Robinson. Now it seems most of his dunks were like this two-handed mini tomahawk deal. By the way, the tomahawk, is that what we still call it? I mean, I don't really care, but it just feels like we'd have a better name for it by now. Actually, all the dunk names seem to be from the 80s. I mean, even though there's a lot of new dunks, you know, the core group, the original variations, they all had this uniquely 80s stench to them. I mean, listen, okay, there's the double pump, the windmill. Okay, that sounds like it's from the 20s, like the 1820s. There's the tomahawk. And then, ooh, a fancy one, the reverse. Huh, okay. And the two options for all of these dunks are either one-handed or two-handed. Oh, a two-handed dunk. See, what I remember is David Robinson having this kind of one-armed, side-cocked, short-armed, John McCain arm type dunk. I was a big fan of that. But on further research, David Robinson, the sea captain, whatever it was, he just was a fan of strange dunks all around. This little mini double pump thing he did. I, I seriously think he's done some stuff that nobody should ever do again. He's just such an interesting character. People have this specific memory of this guy, like he's quiet, respectful, he plays by the rules. No, nope. This guy was a creative, freelancing, let my style do the shit talking kind of player. And he doesn't get the hanging from the rim type of guy points that he deserves. It's like the nickname, the Admiral, kind of took over for what we thought of who he was and not his game. And maybe it's like the osmosis of the Tim Duncan personality seeped into our judgment of him. But again, judge a man by his dunk. Then there's Sean Kemp. He basically made the ball a formality. It was just like a tennis ball to him. 
It was always so clear that the ball was going in the basket. All he was concerned with was making every other move spectacular and weird. Also, he was one of these guys that as soon as he got the ball, he knew what he was going to do with it. Barkley, he was all force, and he was particularly great with the follow through, like he was on the monkey bars. Hmm, there's that little mini double pump again. What's that about? It does not look good or impressive. Why? Why do these guys keep doing it? Of course, Jordan. <sighs> we are not a Jordan tribute show. If you want a Jordan tribute show, you can watch any episode of Open Court. Michael. Michael Jordan. Jordan. Michael MJ. Jordan. Michael Jordan. Jordan. I MJ, obviously. Jordan Byrne. Russell, he leans the heck in. And between the force and the known intent of dunking with force, that gets him a lot of clear lanes. And you have to appreciate his ability to get horizontal in a family sense. Again, see a theme here. Derek Rose. Well, the corpse formerly known as Derek Rose. He would bring the ball so far behind his head with two hands and dunk it so quick, there was never much of a chance for you to block it. I loved those weird ass dunks. Now, the easiest way to increase the excitement is to have someone legitimately try to block it. And if you're good, you've already considered this and made all the appropriate preparations. Well, he dealt with two hands and I moved the ball over to the middle and kaboom, right? There are many many types of dunks, but I believe I, for the first time ever, have broken it down to the three main poops, groups. <laughs> 